Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. All our tunnel syndrome is also known as Guillain's Canal Syndrome, Guillain's Tunnel Syndrome, and it is nicknamed Handlebar Palsy and Cyclist Palsy. Throughout this video, I'm going to call it ulnar tunnel syndrome just to avoid confusion. But as you can tell by the nickname, it is common in cyclists, especially in long distance cyclists. Due to the long time amount of pressure from holding the handlebars and just compression on the nerve. It is also common in wheelchair athletes cross-country skiers and weightlifters, especially weightlifters who do a lot of bench presses. It can also occur in athletes such as tennis players, baseball players, and golfers due to a fracture of the hook of the hamate. The hamate is one of the wrist bones. I'm going to go over the anatomy of the ulnar tunnel just so you understand this a little bit better. The ulnar tunnel is also known as Guillain's Canal. It is a space at the ulnar border of the anterior wrist. It's an anatomical fibrosseous structure. It houses the ulnar nerve and ulnar artery as they pass from the distal forearm into the hand. It begins at the proximal border of the pisiform bone and ends distally at the hook of the hemi. It is bordered by the volar carpal ligament, the transverse retinacular ligament, the pisiform bone, and laterally by the hook of the hamate. The sources of ulnar tunnel syndrome include external compression, a fracture of the hook of the hamate, of the hamate bone, an aneurysm of the ulnar artery, and a ganglion cyst. But the most common source is external pressure. Like I stated before, it is common in cyclists, especially long-term cyclists, just due to compression of the nerve. The entrapment of the ulnar nerve can occur prior to its bifurcation to superficial and deep branches or to one branch. An isolated compression of the deep branch is the most common. The symptoms are going to vary depending on the exact site of the lesion. A proximal compression before the nerve bifurcation causes motor weakness of the ulnar innervated intrinsic muscles and sensory deficits over the hypothenar eminence and small and ring finger. On the ring finger, it is the side of the finger closest to the small finger. If compression is in Guyon's canal, it is pure muscle weakness since the superficial branch is spared. Pure sensory symptoms occur from compression of the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve. The symptoms of ulnar tunnel syndrome vary depending on the location of the entrapment of the ulnar nerve. They can be paresthesia, which is numbness, tingling, and or burning in the fifth finger and the fourth finger, the side of the fourth finger closest to the fifth finger. And there also can be weakness in the intrinsic muscles in the hand. I want to go over the difference between ulnar tunnel syndrome and cubital tunnel syndrome. Cubital tunnel syndrome is also known as ulnar neuropathy at the wrist. And both of these conditions are impingement, compression, or entrapment of the ulnar nerve, but they are at different sites. Cubital tunnel syndrome is compression of the ulnar nerve at the elbow, while ulnar tunnel syndrome is compression of the ulnar nerve at the wrist. The main distinguishing factor of the symptoms is that when someone has cubital tunnel syndrome, they may have paresthesia in the posterior ulnar aspect of the hand, meaning right back in through this area. Now, this is usually spared, I shouldn't say usually, it is spared during ulnar tunnel syndrome because the nerve that provides the sensory innervation to that area does not go through the ulnar tunnel in the wrist. Therefore, if someone has cubital tunnel syndrome, they may have symptoms in this area back here. This is called the posterior or dorsal ulnar aspect of the hand. 
but if they have ulnar tunnel syndrome, they will not have paresthesia in that area. Disclaimer alert. Now it is time for the disclaimer. Please realize watching this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Like I said, my name is Dr. Donald Ozello. I am from Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am a doctor of chiropractic. Please see a medical professional. You can see a doctor of chiropractic like myself, or you can see another type of medical professional. But please do not self-diagnose yourself. If you think you have this condition or any other type of nerve entrapment condition, please take action and see a medical professional so you get the proper evaluation, the proper diagnosis, and get set on the proper path of treatment. Also, if you are performing any type of exercise, it can be a stretching exercise, a strengthening exercise, a motion exercise, if that exercise elicits symptoms or intensifies symptoms, please stop immediately and find a viable substitute. You should work with a medical professional to help you on your path to recovery. Often when ulnar tunnel syndrome is present, thoracic outlet syndrome can be present also. This is what is called a double crush syndrome, meaning there are two or even multiple locations of a nerve entrapment. Thoracic outlet syndrome is compression of the brachial plexus, which is a network of nerves either in the neck underneath the clavicle or underneath the pectoralis minor muscle. This can lead to numerous symptoms in the arm. So all our tunnel syndrome can occur at the same time as thoracic outlet syndrome. If you are getting symptoms of all our tunnel syndrome, cubital tunnel syndrome, or thoracic outlet syndrome, please take action and see a medical professional immediately. Do not self-diagnose yourself. Do yourself a big favor because nerve entrapment conditions can lead to a pathology which leads to anatomical and physiological changes which lead to further pathology. So do yourself a favor. Get this looked at. Get an evaluation. Get a proper diagnosis. Get testing. Whatever you need to do to get that proper diagnosis and get proper treatment. So please seek professional care. You could see a doctor of chiropractic like myself. As a doctor of chiropractic, I would check the entire chain of this nerve and the nerve roots that it branches from. So I would check the cervical spine, which is the medical term for the neck. I would check the thoracic spine, which is the medical term for the mid-back. I would check the shoulder blade area, the shoulder, the upper arm, the elbow, the forearm, the wrist, and the hand. I would check the entire chain where I was doing my evaluation. And then when I was doing my treatment, I would do the same thing. I would treat the entire chain from the neck to the mid-back, to the shoulder blade, to the shoulder, to the upper arm, elbow, forearm, wrist, hand, and fingers. Chiropractic care will help to reestablish proper physiology by restoring proper skeletal motion and removing any impingement or compression on the nerve. There are several things that you can do for yourself if you think you have this condition. First of all, always check with the medical professional to make sure that you are doing the correct things. Because oftentimes people think they have one diagnosis, they self-diagnose themselves, they start doing self-treatment, and they can injure themselves because they have a different condition. So if you have this condition, if you've been diagnosed by a medical professional with ulnar tunnel syndrome, you want to make sure, first of all, if you have it from riding a bike, you want to make sure that you constantly shift your hand positions. Do not leave your hand positions in the same spot for a long time. Shift them, even if it's just a half an inch or one inch, that can make a huge difference. So shift your hand positions on your handlebars. Also shift your body positions. When you have a chance, sit up straight, let go of the handlebars, stretch out your arms, straighten your thoracic spine, straighten your neck, lift your arms out to the side. Just be safe, of course, but you can shake your hands. Just get your hands moving, get the upper body moving. You want to break the static position. 
style. So you want to make sure that your bike is fitted properly for you. You want to make sure that you are in proper position on the bike. You want to make sure that your handlebars are the right height because many times people have their handlebars at the incorrect height and it is putting too much pressure on them because they are leaning too far forward so they're putting too much pressure on their hands and their wrists so make sure you have your bike fitted properly if you are playing other sports like i mentioned weightlifting please modify your training you can shift your hand position on the bar if you do a lot of bench press where you can use a narrow grip a medium sized grip a shoulder width grip or a wide grip so that you are not constantly pressuring the hands wrist and the nerves and bones in that area in the same way Another thing that you could do when you are riding or when you are lifting weights is you could use padded gloves. This will help somewhat. So you want to use every tool that you possibly can to help yourself to prevent this condition. And if you have this condition or had it in the past to prevent a recurrence or a worsening of this condition. Cross training is extremely important in the prevention of injuries. Do yourself a big favor and modify your training and get more cross training into your routine. This way you're not on the bike as long as you usually are or you're not doing the same weightlifting exercises as often as you are. So please modify your training. Also give yourself more rest time in between your training sessions. You can perform stretching, strengthening, and motion exercises for the hand, wrist, forearm, elbow, and really for the entire upper extremity, for the shoulder, for the mid-back, and for the neck. This will help to prevent any strength imbalances that may be present, which can lead to this condition. You may also want to do motion exercises called nerve slides. Nerve slides are non-resistant non-exertion motion exercises which help to decrease nerve entrapment. Thank you everyone for viewing today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today I covered ulnar tunnel syndrome. If you have questions, feedback, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please feel free to like this video and please subscribe to my YouTube page, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. Again, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries, which is available in paperback and in ebook formats. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book and you can also see my blog. My blog contains numerous articles on sports medicine, health, fitness, and chiropractic. So please visit my website championshipchiropractic.com and always remember to train hard but train smart. Get adequate rest between training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you stay injury free and accomplish your